All right, episode one. Uh, thought, what do you think about this? Is this your first time viewing it too? No, no, I, I watched it all uh, a few months ago. Okay. Yeah. I will say that it's am, it seems ambitious. It's yeah. very ambitious. I have trouble with stuff like this as much as a as a sci-fi person as I am there like I'm trying to figure out what there's a lot there's a lot of unanswered questions there's a lot of technology where are we in the you know what's yeah. the world the world building is there's a lot of questions here like and 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 that to me I, I have trouble I have trouble with that what is it what is it called steampunk there's like a little steampunk element to it there's a mm -hmm. um you know I also say it's it's a it's a bold, interesting. Now, Tom Hanks is playing two different characters: the narrator and that guy. No, are they the same? They're the same guy. Okay, that's, that's Cleveland Carr narrating. Got it. Okay. In the beginning, I thought that Cleveland's voice was a little bit different, but now I, I that was my own confusion of it. But I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by it. It's darker than, well, actually, no, it's not darker than I thought. I think I understood it to be dark, uh, but I also don't see how this is a fully engaged. Like, I don't see how this is a. Uh, gonna pull in everybody kind right. of a thing right like and i and i appreciate that but it it doesn't seem like this is something you would not have a social media site about or uh or you know like i don't know if it builds out in that world but it feels very much like a graphic novel i guess yeah it's well it's definitely for 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 the only thing and who knows i don't know whose decision it was because in the one interview i read about it tom hanks seemed sort of like sheepish about the fact that his name was in the title as a possessive because that's kind of a rare thing you sort of right. have like walt disney would have that on things where you have like walt disney's pinocchio you know right and exactly you'd have that possessive but even like it wasn't like rod serling's the twilight zone it was right. sort of like, and uh and whether or not that was a thing because it was it was such a personal project to him that that may have been that somebody insisted like well you got to put your name on it to uh, we need everything we can every little bit right. helps getting but even with the number of dark uh films that tom hanks has been in as an actor or produced or anything it still doesn't necessarily feel like this is what anyone would expect from right. like tom hanks's brand like the closest thing in terms of tone that it reminds me of would be like road to perdition which still feels like an outlier in the world of tom hanks films you know yes absolutely and and i think you know, this very much feels like a graphic novel. Like I think it, it, it had like it, if you told me like, oh, Ed Brubaker wrote this and Tom just like loved it. And this is like kind of this, you know, uh, yeah. you know, like that. Like I'm, I'm even thinking like the the author of like Southern Bastards. I'm just forgetting his name, but like it has that kind of uh, that kind of feeling to it, you know? Yeah, like it almost to some extent there there's there's certain elements of different kinds of dystopian sci-fi but also mood wise it has almost like a uh, a dark knight returns like a batman sort of vibe to the way it the tone of the future you know yes it's very dark and it, but again it feels like if you know you're not watching it uh it has a a little bit of a uh, ready player one element to it like mm -hmm. the way that the houses are stacked and and it you know it's it's clearly it doesn't feel like our world it doesn't also feel like the description that I read too. Like I read this thing about a, a utopia. This feels like, this feels like a, it doesn't feel like a utopia necessarily, you know? Um, but I will say this unexpected, but not turned off just kind of like trying to wrap my head around it. This is like one of those things where I feel like maybe the first episode would have been better served at 10 minutes because while it did have a nice beginning, middle and end, I, I, I feel like I'm not fully, I'm not fully in just yet. We've yeah. jumped around a lot, I guess. Well, let's let's go to the second right. one. We'll see how this how this goes. And next time in the end credits, let's play through to. I want you to see your name in that list of names. Wait, so my name is in the first one, even though oh, I'm not. Yeah. Wow, I look think at this. so. I think so. I mean, maybe. Let's, let's, check, let's check to make sure right. in the in the first one. Okay, we'll, we'll take a look here. Maybe they said like one one title. I think every title. name. I think every okay. name has got that title card. Okay, let me take a look. I'll go back and. I'm um, looking here. Oh, good cast. Alph alphabetical. Hanks. So yeah. Hanks is like deep down in the H's. In the middle. Yeah. Daniel Fred. Okay. 
Uh, there's yeah, June's there name. Top, not, you're at the top. Yeah, I'm there, right there, right above you're, Brian Stack. Great. You're, sta you're stacked above Stack. Uh, and, and this is a great. I mean, when you look at this list of people, it's it's it is amazing. I mean, from Jeannie Triplehorn to James uh, Urbaniak, uh, you know, like I said, uh, Chris Parnell. Uh, so many, so many great people in this thing. We got like, and that's Samantha Sharp, who is just an amazing producer, kind of, I think, pulling together all this talent. Now, Tom yeah. did write all these. That's, is that true? I believe so. As far as like, when I, when I look on, I don't know whether he wrote on ever or is credited on every episode or not, because I think the created by is obviously the, the big one, but I believe yeah. he, if he, I mean, I haven't talked to enough behind the scenes people to know, like, he could have Whatever. had the treatment and somebody could have executed yeah. his treatment. Because I, I yeah. feel like I'm not even seeing a writer's credit. I'm seeing EP credits. And that's something that we did on Human Giant. We weren't allowed to have writers because uh, we were in a WGA show. So we just said we had a lot of EP credits on our show uh, to kind of signify who was uh, a writer and, and stuff like that. Because it seems like these two gentlemen that I mentioned in that first email, they those guys who I saw every time were yeah. always there. Yeah. And so, Was yeah. one of those Josh Feldman? Yes. And okay. to, to say that I had a, I, I had no more of a uh, relationship with him than simply through the booth. Lovely. And by the way, great experience when I was in there. Uh, right. You know, it was, just, it was just daunting because they would always kind of be explaining it. If I'm right or I could be wrong, like, I also feel like the original conception of this, as things are coming back to me, was that the animation was going to be a little bit slicker than this. This looks a little bit like, a, like I feel like a, a French animated film i don't know why i but it has like it has like a, an element to it. it uh but i also know the animation is expensive as well so uh but there's something about it that feels french to me uh, yeah the, the the movement it feels like sometimes they're doing things with depth to yes. sort of compensate for maybe limited movement because it looks sophisticated it doesn't look like it, no it's, it's not cheap it's just like it looks like phoned in or lazy but it does look like sometimes that they're compensating for like one design element while there's not a lot of maybe movement in a particular shot, you know? Exactly. I totally agree with that. All right, so episode two. Yeah. Wow, okay. So, first of all, I'm in that one. So that was exciting. You're in that one. I remembered it, honestly, as uh, as the scene started. I was like, oh, I remember the scene. I remember it completely. Um, I am a man buying a, uh, a, a kind of a, uh, a hot radio box basically like a uh, uh a hacked uh dvr uh, cable receiver or something like that yeah um I, I and i appreciate they gave me a little gap in my teeth I, you know which is uh always appreciate uh -huh. that uh, manzukas and i did a uh teenage mutant ninja turtle uh yeah uh, you know some animated show which is very funny but they the animators got confused on who was who so the mm -hmm. jason character looks like me and i look like the jason <laughs> character <laughs> <laughs> they only realized it too late. Uh, yeah. But I do appreciate that they, they gave it uh, a little bit of a look. So here's my thought on this one. Yeah. That first one we saw was a pilot. That was what they sold the series on. They made that, they sold the series on. Because this second one is very, very different. Like it doesn't feel necessarily of the same world. It feels like the scope of it is... It's lighter. It's a little bit brighter. It's there's ominous undertones, but it's not as dark as um, noiry. Uh, there are, but there are some shocking moments. Like this is end death is like very shocking. So there's like acts of very extreme violence, and that often seems to be the cliffhangers of these episodes. Um, yeah. But again, not turned off. It, but we're introducing a lot of characters, and again, as as someone who's trying to keep track of everything, I'm like, this is a lot. I'm like, where, who am I following? Who am I on board with? I don't know yet. I don't know who yeah. I'm supposed to be with. And I know I'm supposed to be with uh, Tom's character. And I and actually, you know, I'm seeing him now in a different light in the beginning of this episode. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, where where do you, like, what was your experience with this as you watch episode two? Uh, even now, there's the part of me that feels like I'm, I'm trying to catch up, which is not yes. always... A not always a bad feeling. Uh, it, it's it's the storytelling is not um, is not holding my hand. They're not waiting for me. You know what no. I mean? They're sort of like if you don't if you don't quite get what's going on yet, just keep going. You know, you kind of we're on to the next thing. Yes, uh, which is sometimes if that happens for long enough, I start to tune out in something. But at this point, as I'm watching, 
I'm intrigued. I, I don't feel like it's the fault of the show that I'm that I'm not keeping up necessarily. I feel like it's part of the appeal is we're being thrown in the deep end of this world. They're not explaining when they hold up like here's the code for the letters. Yes. I don't understand what that means yet. Um, but I don't feel like I am uh, flunking out. You know, I, I feel like, oh, I will get to understand this. You describe this kind of perfectly. What I think I really appreciate about this show so far is that it is a sci-fi show. It is a deep, this is like a hardcore sci-fi show. Like, and and I'm feeling the way I would feel if I read um, a tougher, this is a, a weird thing to say, but like a tougher to read sci-fi book. It is like the we yeah exactly Catch like if up. you're if you're reading like uh, like a clockwork orange the first couple of pages you're oh like, yeah I'll, I'll never i'll never be able to figure out what he's saying and then you start to figure it out and you start to feel good about it you know yes and it, and you and and instead of saying like and what i really appreciate about this world and, and the writing of this is there's not a narrator who goes in this world our prisoners uh, manufacture energy and that's how they pay their time and in this world like there isn't yeah. no one is going to hold your hand and so i i appreciate I guess what I'm kind of wrestling with right now is going, yeah. it's being billed as a populist thing. Like this is going to be, this is the next cool animated sci-fi thing. But I think what I really appreciate about it is this is like, this is more like Animatrix where it's like, this is more, we're going deep into style, tone. Uh, yeah, it, it's more sci-fi. It, it, it's unabashedly sci-fi, I guess is what I should It's say. also in the, in the you know how there's there's different eras of Tom Hanks's filmography and how like in the 80s there's certain there's a certain um uh early Tom Hanks that feels a little bit more like um his characters felt very horny it felt like mm. there was a period where Tom Hanks's characters were all about like trying to like sleep with the woman oh yeah the man with one red shoe there was like yeah there was like a, like a bachelor party like bachelor a bit, yeah, party. horny yeah yeah, that there, there was just this feeling of like volunteers that he was like this cad sort of, but a safe cad. Like safe you know, cad. he, he yeah, wasn't like he wasn't like a yeah. Like and I think there's a, a fun difference. I think that like uh, even safer than a Bill Murray, who I yeah. think you know who also was a safe cad as well. But he was Elma Tom was a I, I believe even more lovable and it, like yeah. it almost felt like he was horny is a great term. Yeah, but but it's a weird thing because people who are younger who grew up with a different era of Tom Hanks know him as this sort of like noble figure and if yes. they in some of the early movies i think they'd be shocked by how there's it can be kind of uh, lascivious at times yeah this this show i'm realizing falls into a very specific just maybe just a fluke of timing and coincidence but the sh the tom hanks movie that i think this series is most closely aligned with i know i mentioned road to perdition in terms mm -hmm. of his character but in terms of the overall world building it kind of feels like cloud atlas Oh, you're right. Absolutely right. And I think and it's sort of a similar yeah. it's the same decade, basically, and strange, um, multifaceted, also not for everybody, you know, and not trying mm -hmm. to be for everybody, you know, like taking big swings at being strange sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I now understand to a certain extent why if you're Tom Hanks, you're upset that it's Tom Hanks's Electric City, because ultimately, mm -hmm. like Tom Hanks is, is your buy in. But yeah. Tom Hanks's Electric City are it it's not quite working the way that you would want it to because I think actually Tom Hanks pulls you in a different direction like it, it like this it almost should be like oh did you know that Tom Hanks made this show it's it, it we shouldn't lead with it but I understand also from a marketing point of view you have to say Tom Hanks is so and so yeah all right this um, is interesting well, let's, right. let's do let's, let's do the, the third one they they go down quick I'll say that they go down. Quick, I also love the ritual of the opening music theme. Yeah. The plate drops there. I like the Playtone dropping, and I haven't looked at that logo in quite some time. I was hoping it would be a record. Interesting. This is an, that was an interesting one. I feel like we're getting, yeah. we're get, we're getting into the the world and again tonally it's jump at like we're we're all over the place we're all over the spot this is a yeah. this is a this is a big world and it's almost bigger than I, I now i'm even feeling that there's like a game of thrones element to it as far as like the cast of characters but i'm not even quite sure where they all intertwine but i'm looking now forward to it right i'm gonna say one thing 
that I'm nervous to say. Ooh, now I'm excited to hear it. All right. <sighs> I don't know if it's the way it's drawn or if it's a miscast. I don't know if I, I think I'm having a hard time reconciling the person that Tom Hanks is and the, the animated character that he's portraying. I don't think he's doing a bad job. I just can't quite tell. I'm having a hard time like putting these two people together. I don't know. That's working hard for me a little bit here. Right. I don't it's, know. I mean, I can also go off this if we want to edit this out because I, I like I made this is like I'm looking. I'm like I, this is I think the issue to a certain extent. I can totally not talk about this. Well, it's an interesting thing though because it has to do with, and you'll see this more as it goes on that uh, the Tom Hanks Cleveland Car, Cleveland Car character is very buff. You'll see him with his shirt off a lot, yeah. and it's very much like it's sort of like a, a almost a James Bond or like yes. mixed with something more more um That's rough around the edges yeah. kind of and uh, that it almost is is more of a clint eastwood role than a than a tom hanks role yes in some ways yeah so maybe and... i'll just say yeah so maybe i'll say this i'll say i think the the thing i'm having a hard time reconciling at this point is and this is a, and this is a really crappy thing to say because as an actor you want over people to accept whatever role you're doing. And I think when I see Tom Hanks in Road to Perdition, I buy that character. But I think when I'm just hearing his voice and seeing how this character is drawn, I'm leaning, it's almost like one thing is pulling me into what I know and comfortable in with Tom Hanks. And then one thing is pulling me into how this character is, which is just like, this is like a a badass, like a, a you know, like this, this, you know, gun for hire, assassiny, uh, type of character that maybe is more synonymous with a, a Jason Statham or a, something like that, you know? Now, I wonder how much of that, because I think that that in the same way that from a marketing point of view, right. Tom Hanks' Electric City being the title with his name in the title, in the same way that that's a buy-in for a lot of people that maybe draws people more likely to check it out. Yeah. I wonder if it was just called Electric City and you knew that Tom Hanks wrote it and is in it, I wonder if, if it's just an additional layer of awareness of it being like, even if you didn't know that he wrote it and you're just watching it and you realize, oh, I think that's Tom Hanks as the main character or something. Yeah. I wonder I wonder if it's just like we're, we're a little bit hyper aware of the Hanks. I, I it. think you might be because look, I'm, I'm someone who has watched uh, a bunch of, you know, I've watched Toys very many a time and I never think, oh, that's Tom Hanks. I think of that as that's Woody. A, that's Woody. And, yeah. and, you know, and, and I've listened to him narrate things and like, I think you're right. There might be, uh it might be it might we might just be too focused on it in a way i again i like the character i like the arc of it i'm just like i think you know i, I maybe i'm adding too much to it because of in, my what i'm bringing yeah. to it imagine this imagine if uh you came to see me i i, I was the lead role in a production of uh death of a salesman yeah but before the play began i came out in front of the curtain and I said to the audience, I want everyone to know I really, really wanted to play this part. And then I yes. went back behind the curtain. Right. It, it would affect the way that you might watch me in the play because you'd be like, why did he tell us that? Right. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, there is a there's a certain. Yes, you're right. You're right. Uh... <laughs> that I think the weirdness of the name of the title maybe adds a little extra element of like thinking about not just um, the qual because I think the objectively, like when I try to separate myself from it, kind of like when you, you know, when you're listening to a song you've heard yeah. too many times and you try to focus and listen to it with sort of fresh ears if you can. It's kind of hard, to, almost impossible to do what you do it. I wonder, and when I listen to this performance, I'm like, I think this is a good performance, but I think there's a part of me that is a little too aware of the fact that um, it's such an unusual, non-typical character in a thing that he's written that's a, you know, that there's just that's, like, I'm yeah. thinking about it more than uh, I, like I, and some of, it comes from, some of it comes from the the transition to the celebrity voice casting versus the relatively anonymous, yes. sort of like the pre-Aladdin uh, animation yes. actors, you know, people, I don't. I don't know who the voice of Geppetto is in Disney's Pinocchio. I just the, think of that as Geppetto. And but know? I will say that I watch often. I'll watch a Pixar movie, 
not knowing who is in it. And then sometimes, oh, 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 I, oh, I think that that's so and so. Or a lot of the times at the end, you're like, oh my god, that was Christian Sol. Uh, sorry, oh my gosh, that yeah. was guy uh, the kids, Kristen Shaw. Uh, you know, you'll be like, you'll just be listening and be like, oh my gosh, that was Jeff Garland. Oh, okay, like, and you get like caught up, but like they're not leading. Like very, I think Pixar does that really smartly. It's like you never see the names above the titles. Whereas DreamWorks, it's like Jack Black is Kung Fu Panda. Um, yeah. And I do agree that this is like, like he is, he is actually, the performance is good. I might be having a hard time reconciling that voice and that character. Like, you know, it's like, like you know, even how they drew my character with a gap in their teeth. And I think that's probably a small nod, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but like this idea too, it's like, oh, I'm not used to that. I mean, I, but I can go against it with a million other things. I don't know. I'm yeah. enjoying it. I'm just like, that was something that I was keeping me up. I think it's it, part of it is I'm interest I'm a, I'm a little bit extra interested in uh, oh he wanted to do this and this isn't something that he would be offered right but yet when I see him in Road to Perdition don't have any problem with that at all I actually think that's a great performance so uh, so here we go episode four another well, another oh, okay. another thing that uh, I was thinking as I watched this that did you ever watch Liquid Television back yes in the 90s? yes it kind of gives me the same feeling I used to get watching the Aeon Flux Aeon Flux. Yes, I didn't fully understand what was going on, but I was, and each time I'd think like, oh, I, I, I kind of get what's happening a little bit, but I, it kept, it hooked me in, you know? Yeah, I, I think that there are these things, I think it's what animation and, and, and kind of adventurous storytelling does, which is, it's not telling me a traditional story. So what I have to hold on to is interesting moments. You know, I, I, I you know, so I'm like, I'm kind of, running through a farm uh, picking an apple an orange a grape and a, a strawberry so i have a, a you know i have a satchel full of all these different fruits instead of just like what i think we're normally used to is like i'm going to the i'm going to get pumpkins and i just have my pumpkin like so i think that there's something about yeah. this thing where you're just like I, oh i like that and i like this and i like that but if you ask me like what's the plot of this four episodes in i, I don't know but I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I can, I can tell you like little moments and I, there's a guy and, he, and I don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. Is he working for the resistance? But what's the resistance trying to do? Are they trying not to, uh, to let people have technology? What are they trying to, because it seems to me like Tom Hanks is working for the good guys, but at the same time, he's kind of watching a bad guy, but is that guy bad because he's trying to break communication? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And That's in the meantime, life. there's steamboats and, and flying helicopters. Like out of James Bond, you only live twice. And, and there's a lot of, you know, so I'm just like, okay, all right. I, but I guess where I would get frustrated in other things, I am, I think that the five minutes actually works here. And I think that, you know, there's, like we were saying in the beginning, there's two ways to watch it, the YouTube way or the Vimeo way. And I'm glad we're watching it in the YouTube way because I feel like it, it's a palate cleanser that resets and we're back in. I also am very, I personally, I, I almost never hit the skip intro button on any TV show because yeah. to me, I always feel like, especially if I like the thing, it yeah. feels like a ritual. It feels like now we are re-entering a world. It's the know? overture. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Episode uh, four. All right, that I can say is legitimately my favorite episode so far. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I'm in. Like that one had the most, uh, for lack of a better term, it was a story. I was in. I was like that. Like that felt like it hit the tone. Everything is firing for me on that. You know, and that feels to me, yeah. I like if that's the show, I want to watch that show. And I, I think, I don't know if I'm reacting to, just storytelling where i actually know the beginning middle and end and i just feel like i see it I, I but yeah i'm excited by that episode yeah and i feel like there's some very like the 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 efficiency of the final 30 seconds of that is yes. in terms of like um establishing this villain instantly killing him yeah. And also imbuing, you know, we've been seeing all these scenes of them with their knitting needles, with the hairpin like knitting needles. Yeah. Yeah. In these episodes. And they've always been sort of like, well, there's this like knitting circle that seems to wield this power and influence. But this now 
almost makes you think back to every time you've seen that character knitting that these are her you know weapons these are her yeah. samurai swords, you know yeah like, it, it, yeah it's that the end of that feels like something out of kill bill it is just like uh a very very effective piece of sort of brutal flashback storytelling i i i, I kind of love it and I, I almost feel like i would love that to have been the first episode in a weird way like to kind of like because it's like you get those things that we've already seen which is like they're transcoding something they shot it like june and i uh, who June also looks like herself, you know, we kind of, we know we're being watched and we go into the people who are watching us and then we go, you know, it, it, that, that builds the world to me in the most effective way. And I don't, right. and, it, and I don't know with the exception of the journalist who I, I was excited to see back. Uh, I don't know. That's what I've been looking for in this series. It's like a lean in and I haven't yeah. quite had that yet. So they're, they're okay. I'm, I'm, it's also another thing that's interesting casting wise in this, uh, the the that's that's chris parnell is the yes. god nation judge yeah. there and it made me think interestingly because uh the perils of uh having any kind of like screen presence that people associate one way or the other as a, even as a voice actor that there was one tone where he went up on a word that now i associate so much with his character i know Murray. That yeah. I was like, oh, there are notes that he has to worry about like if he's playing a character yeah. now because it's so like such a trademark distinctive sound. The other thing that's interesting, and I didn't even occur to me at first, is that two of the uh, actors in this are uh, Jeannie Triplehorn, Jean Triplehorn and Jennifer Goodwin. Mm -hmm. And they were both on the, the show Big Love around the same time, which was a Playtone series. Oh, okay. So you're starting to see like in the same way that uh, uh, people get sort of rounded up when they're certain like yeah. uh, at a casting level that it's like that was an easy ask, you know, because they're all working on a, a Playtone show that it's like, oh, well, let's get them in here, you know? Yeah, it kind of pulls these people together. And I think that you see like this merging, like Samantha was uh, very much uh, worked hand in hand with uh, Smigel. That was where she came from. So the comedy yeah. SNL, New York City world. So I think that she had their, her hand tapped in there and I'm sure Playtone had their people. So you get to actually a very, when you look at that cast list, it's a very diverse cast list. It's actually great casting. Yeah. Um, but, I, and, uh, and truly the, the, one of the interesting things, uh, especially in terms of my own Tom Hanks narrative, is that in the limited number of things where he's been involved in casting. So you got that yeah. thing you do and Band of Brothers, and uh, this, and Larry Crown. The examples that come to mind immediately. One thing that all four of those have in common is very impressive and thoughtful casting. Well, I think you get that with uh, an actor. I think, and, you know, like, I, yeah. I remember you were, gosh, in one of your episodes, you had, um, you know, a guy who had worked with Tom back in the day and he would always kind of call him in to, you know, do this stuff. It's like, it's also that memory of knowing all, all those people that you've worked with, all those people that you have seen, all those people that you want to work with. And I think animation is this beautiful way to um, create a cast that you'll never be able to create live action. And yeah. you also have people who are willing to just do it. It's like animation is one of the most fun things to do because it is, you know, it, it, it takes away all the other parts, the trappings of acting, which, you know, can be yeah. cumbersome, I guess, to a certain degree. It, it, so, it, yeah, you, it liberates you from sort of like the physical world. Yeah. And it and then I think that these uh, animators are doing a great job uh, with, the, like, you know, it has a little bit of a, you know, it's like, it's almost like artistic archer, too, in a way, too, because the, the characters yeah. are very, very uh, you know, sternly dra uh, drawn. Um, it's, it's also interesting in this episode, because we... If the, the first episode was so centered kind of on Cleveland Carr, on the Tom yeah. Hanks character, and the, the deeper we've gotten into it, uh, the more it seems like the, the, the world is expanding so much beyond that character. Yes. He's not even at the center of it in some cases, you know? Yes, and I was thinking about, like, is that, was that part of A, why he's, like, does he want to be Cleveland Carr? Or do they say you have to be Cleveland Carr? Or do they say, hey, if you want to be in this and you want to do this world, you have to be... We have to have you in the first episode. We have to, like, I don't know. There, there could have been a lot of concessions made to get this going because I do feel like it, to your point before about this is, you know, obviously his dream project, but I also believe that Tom is not like writing himself like this is the dream part. I think he's like, I want to make this world. It, and that's yeah. what I feel like I'm getting because if it was 
I want to be this character. It would be the Cleveland car show. It would, you know, like, and it's not that it is a, a fully scoped out world. Whereas I feel like that first episode is really fun, but this episode is, I think the culmination of everything that we've just seen. And he could have also taken this as an opportunity to do a million voices. He'd done like, in, like yeah. he'd done that in Polar Express where he plays a bunch of the characters, you know? Right. So well, even the narrator would... is gone from the first episode. The narrator is introduced in yeah. the first kind of, we're gone with that. Like, I, I do believe there is a studio noting this on some level going more Tom, more, because the only person they can really sell this on, because the cast list is great actors, but no one that is going to, I don't think going to guarantee you you know, a million views or whatever it is, uh, yeah. you know, I yeah. wonder, I just wonder, I wonder what the behind the scenes is of, of that. But, uh, well, all right, let's see, let's episode five here. Interesting, interesting. I uh, I don't know if I have much to say about that, but I will say that I think that this, I go back and forth and going whether or not this show, sometimes these episodes feel perfect for five, and mm -hmm. sometimes they feel like they are not, they have not told me enough of a story to get in and out of five. Right, like sometimes right. It, it's like the way that they used to describe like the X-Files, like there are Monsters of the Week episodes, and then there were plot episodes. And I yeah. think that that's what we're we're seeing elements of that in this series so far, which is like there are contained five minute stories that are not contained in the sense of like they are moving forward the plot and kind of giving you, you know, there's an, an actual A, B and C movement here. It's like yeah. right, we're just getting into the plot. And I feel like that's these are the ones where I'm like, OK, this is inter again, interesting, interesting. But I feel like there's a lack of a um, when it is in five minute chunks, that's where I'm where now have, having watched a handful i'm like okay i wanted more i wanted more from that yeah yeah it is i think you know i'm 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 going to be talking to samantha and also uh josh and they'll yeah. probably have some insights into uh you know the behind the scenes the things that they were dealing with the dynamics because whatever the demands whatever the you have to have this or this didn't yeah. work you know um it's it does seem to me like in the same way that like right now um like launching a podcast can be hard now because there's so many podcasts that it it, it when there are times when it becomes a punchline where it's like oh you should listen to my podcast yeah they uh it feels like you're you're throwing a, a drops of water into the ocean you know yes um i feel like by the time this came out um oh check out my web series had start we started yes. to reach a point where the idea of someone asking you to watch their web series it had become a burden almost where it's like right. i wonder if the, if tom hanks had had a web series in 2006 that would have been a very different thing you know that that well, he might have been one of the only people you know yeah but i would also argue that going back to that original point of most web series that i I'm familiar with and i could be wrong people will mm -hmm. tell me i'm wrong were comedy based right they're they yeah. are they are they were more vignette this is a this yeah. is a a bigger idea that they're asking you to invest in right like it is a an adult animated hard sci-fi show like in, and i say hard in the sense of it is more about the world than it is about the adventure there is and not to not to make everything about star wars but it's like star wars it's a very simple story. It's a hero fighting a, a big bad right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know who our heroes are necessarily. I don't know who the big bads are. I don't know. I don't know the stakes of the world. I understand that there are things at play based on things yeah. that I've seen before. I think there's, you know, World War II stuff. I think that there is, you know, um, you know, I think that and you can tell like Tom Hanks loves World War II stuff. And I think there's a lot of that, like that under, you know, code breaking and listening to transmissions and, and being kind of, everything looks fine on the outside, but underground, it's not, it isn't fine. And I, I like all that. Um, it's just a hard, it's a hard buy-in because I do think the best web series, the best web series could stand alone 
on an episode. And that is a bold statement, but I'm going to say that I think the ones that we remember as being web series, you watch a broad city, you watch a burning love, you watch, you know, a, a, a Wayne days, um, mm -hmm. whatever they are, they are, you could watch them all and feel very fulfilled, but you could just watch one and feel like, okay, well I got, it, I got it. And I'm, I left with something. Yeah. You could, you could pop in to an episode and enjoy it. Yes. And right now, Whereas, yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say right now with this one, I, it also feels like I can shuffle these episodes up and it wouldn't make that much of a difference. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. To a certain you extent know, because they're already telling some things out of order in a way that. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. A real up and down process with the, with this show. It, it's interesting because it's like, it's just like nothing like there's not enough connective tissue yet i mean yes we understand the woman in the knitting circle we're, but it's like even her story I, I i'm i'm hard pressed to tell you exactly what's going on more than she is just okay something is happening she's aware mm -hmm. of it but you know it's like we we uh, we don't have our you know and now now we're we're going into episode 6 which is we're you know we're over a quarter of the way through this origin story i don't know you know i mean yeah. we also are getting origin stories we're getting a present day story we're we're doing a lot there's a lot going on in electric city yeah um all right so episode uh, uh six here we come also we've reached the point where some of the episodes are in terrible quality on youtube okay yeah I have a new theory on this and I, I feel yes. like every, every one of these is breaking me up. <laughs> I feel like what's happening is I'm lacking a central narrative. I don't know who to follow. I'm enjoying certain characters when they come back. And I feel like the, the show would be better served with, you could do it this way, but it's like, this is a, this is a so-and-so story. This is the reporter story. This is the, mm -hmm. like, you know, and bill it like that. And like, let me know. Okay. We're like, it's almost like a, like shortcuts or something like very Robert Altman. I mean, it has a Robert Altman feel to it, but I feel like we're not, it's, it's almost too, I don't like, it keeps on changing who I'm trying to follow. And I think that that's how I'm having a harder time with that. You're craving structure. I think I'm like, craving like, like, like what you're like lost yeah. has yes. like each episode has one thing you can hold on to, even if, uh, we don't progress other things. It, there's always one thing that an episode will, will hook us in with. Yeah, and I think, I, and you're right, like, and I'm not trying to be like, oh, I needed to have a beginning. I, I just like, I, I'm I, like, there's so many characters that are in and out. Like, I just like, I don't know where my allegiances are yet because like the point of view is switching from episode to episode, but yet it also feels like it keeps on expanding too. Yeah, and it, it, <laughs> to mention like, if you were to take uh, Robert Altman's Nashville, yeah. and cut it up into five minute webisodes. Right. You would, you would probably be similarly frustrated because sometimes you'd go many, many episodes without checking in on. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Where, whereas if it's all together in one work, you can, uh, it, it, it's, I think it's, it's a little bit of that thing of what to, ex, what we expect of, it's why it's always helpful to know when you're watching a movie, if it's 90 minutes or two hours or three hours, right. because if you're watching expecting a certain length of movie and then it's twice as long you're sort of like almost like that thing of, of of if you think you're about to drink a glass of juice and it turns out you've picked up a glass of milk that yes. expectation changes the way you react to it you know yeah and and, and it's and and this is the tricky thing because i think it is very well performed directed and everything it's just sort of like i think now at episode six i'm like all right well i do i do need to and now I'm getting a little frustrated in the sense of I just want a little bit more. And I'm, I'm happy to see characters returning. Like, it's great to see that report. I feel like I, I'm connected to, like, right now, the stories I'm connected to are uh, Tom Hanks's character, the reporter character, and then the old woman. Um, and I'm, whenever I see them, I'm, I'm good. And I, they, I like that here. And I'm like, oh, we're going to, I hope we stay with her. And then part of me is like, will we? I don't know. I don't know. And, and now I'm like, I, I, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I just want to I want to stay with the character for a little now, bit longer. When when Yahoo was releasing like with Burning Love, yeah, did those episodes come out weekly or daily? Weekly. Or uh, oh, maybe week? it may have it may have been daily. It may have been daily or twice a week. It was something. Yeah, it may have been like twice a week or something like that. I can't remember. It wasn't it wasn't a ten week uh, rollout. It might have been a five week rollout. 
because I think that also would affect how I'd feel about these, because I think if it came out daily, I'd have a different reaction than if it came out weekly. And I'm not sure which yes. one, I, I'm not I, sure which one I actually want, you know? Like, I don't know either. This is like, this is, this thing is tricky to me. Cause it's like, I am in, but then I'm like, oh, I'm getting frustrated at points. So sometimes like I want more, I, I, I just want something else. I not, not something, and I'm not bored by it. I just want a little bit more. Yeah. I need a little bit more. And the thing that's weird about it is because they're so short, but they're also so dense and they're also so varied, yes. it's hard to know how, because right now you're getting the the instant gratification of not having to wait for another episode. Oh, and if I had to wait, forget it. I think you would lose the thread of these things, right? If, if there yeah. was a week between each of these, you'd be like, I don't know. Where were we? Yeah. Like what, what, yeah. They're what last time on, but even if you did it last time on, it wouldn't necessarily relate to what the next time is, you know? So maybe yeah. it would work. I don't know. All right, I'm yeah. excited to see where I end up in episode seven here. That was a short one too, by the way. Yeah. There's like a four minute one. Ooh, look at the quality on this one. This one's good quality. Ooh, high quality, yeah. Really? I mean, again, whenever I think I'm out, I get pulled back in. I mean, this is my favorite character right now. Yeah, yeah. It's bloody. And anytime there's an episode where uh, the female characters are stabbing men through the <laughs> necks with knitting needles, it is a it is a high point. I feel like this is the first episode where I have real clarity, even though I think overall, yeah. not to spoil too much of the show, I think the show enjoys living in a in a in a world where kind of like how in the wire there are people with good agendas and bad agendas, good intentions, right. bad intentions, but nobody is one thing or another purely. Yes, I agree with that. And I feel like this is building a world like the wire. I could see the show maybe even being influenced by the wire. I mean on some level, or like, you know, this is it could it could have that you know it's like it's like a dystopian wire you know we are following a bunch of different plot lines and as you say that i'm thinking like oh the wire did go around i think you know i think what we're finding though is those bits of clarity are not diluting what we're doing it's just sort of helping us get yeah. to it like i i do feel like and maybe it was a choice her storyline feels like if you reordered it and started here or like you, mm -hmm. could, you could actually tell a story in an interesting way but i guess like flashbacks are, are really her thing like her thing is the lost like the right. lost model and and every other character is telling like that's the other thing too we're not staying to one narrative conceit like yeah. uh she's the flashback episodes and uh and you know and our reporters are in the present but so is our tom hanks character so i'm in i'm like again i'm 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 engaged and i think what i what again what i like about it is when I understand it a little bit, you don't have to give me everything. Yeah. I'm, that one we got a sense of, oh, we watching this, we are living in the era of uh highways and yes, the swollen the swollen rivers and that there was a period where that all fell apart. And then as as this is like a next uh uh historically like an an uh everything falls apart and then in the rebuilding a new there electric were, age or something like that. They've, they've yeah, discovered and, electricity or, yeah. And what is our sort of like, let's say our present moment within the story, you have this knitting circle that's in control, but before them, and that's also a very Game of thrones -y thing where it's like, yeah. Game of Thrones, I always think is is the, the, the fantasy medieval sort of version of The Wire in that it's all about systems of power Mm -hmm. And the way that personal agendas sort of muddy those up that a like, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and yet at the same time, all you can ultimately really count on is those personal connections. Those are the purest things. And they're also the things that cause problems. And I see a similar sort of storytelling device in this because we see this, um, let me get the name of that character. That is the, um, which I believe is uh, Ruth Orwell. Yes. Um, is everybody named by, Orwell? I don't know. It's a voice by Holland Taylor, who's an, oh, an yeah. actress that, that I've seen in a million things. It's great. Um, 
but her character being in power having influence and power in the electric city and then seeing how she at one point took that power because things were so unfair and she had you know had a child die because of not access to heat in the yeah. winter and you know you're getting this full sense of like but now she's in power and to some people she would represent like the problem like the 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 people who were revolutionaries or like it's a, you know there's a, like an element of telling a story where people are always in opposition to whoever's in power there's yeah. always that thing like power uh being corruptible you know yeah i, I and i and i'm enjoying that what are you and looking then, for? You're yeah looking for. yeah i'm also looking at like you know it's interesting because i feel like um you know this is written and produced by people who don't really again i'm not sure who the writers are on this i mean i'm looking at some of their credits and they, they have amazing credits but uh this is like, you know another thing where it's like uh i haven't seen like many writing credits i've seen a lot of like uh, producing credits so this is interesting you know I'm trying to right you know um but i'm looking and at, yeah well like even just like if we like as i'm looking through the writing credits Josh Feldman's credited, Bo Stevenson credited for 20 episodes. And and on IMDb, which you can't always trust the way that IMDb yeah. sort of lists them. Tom Hanks is listed as creator and two episodes. But that, you never know, that could be a contractual thing because a lot of times the credited writer on a specific episode may have, that just may be the one that they had a deal for your credit for this yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. People right, had, yeah. Other people had a hand in it and that writer has had a hand in other episodes, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, uh, but yeah, it's interesting if let's, let's assume based on everything that, that like we count this as one of Tom Hanks's few writing sort of credits yeah. in, in film and television. That thing you do, Larry Crown, this, and the, the movie Greyhound, like those would be like the, and then uh, to whatever extent, let me see if there's other things that Tom Hanks has a writing credit on, but like that is such a, like you can see the link between something like that thing you do and Larry Crown and that they're just, yeah, you know, they're human stories set on our planet, you know, that they're like funny and dramatic or, you know, um, well, like, and, and now lately, they're not massively yeah. in conflict. He has one teleplay, teleplay credit for one episode of Band of Brothers. Uh, some episodes of From the Earth to the Moon are credited to him, yeah. according to this. Uh, and then the adaptation of Greyhound was his most recent thing. But like Electric City is an outlier on in every level of of what you know the the what the sort of like brand as a writer would be if you were yes. basing it off of the two well known yeah. sort of. Um, yeah interesting yeah um I'll, yeah again it's 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 a uh now i yeah. i think i think i think we've reached the the your time limit on oh. this which the i think we the we're at are we at three thirty six thirty my time which is, yeah yeah i mean if you want yeah. we can watch i mean we could you know watch another one or we could talk or we, we can do like a you know i i, I don't want to you know because we we are almost well yeah what do you what do you think what do you, i think i think um let's watch one more episode together talk okay, for a minute and then if you want we can continue it another time watching it together or you could watch the rest on your own and then we can we can like yeah we convene we, for 20 minutes at some point to yeah. do like a quick final thought i'm down with that of. yeah because i also have like a uh i have some stuff to share from when it was finally coming out and the involvement and all that sort of stuff as well so there's a great. i have a couple of things there too all right great so let's watch one more together and see how it goes all right yeah. I love it when one of them happens to be in higher resolution. <laughs> it's amazing. My eyes relapsed. All right. Now we're at Now, again. This is an episode mm -hmm. where I feel like things are starting to flow, tie. Like I'm starting to like the payoff, and we are. That was episode eight. Um, yeah. The payoff is, you know, maybe we should just watch 
to 10. So you have a real, you know, we, let's, let's yeah, we'll get to, to the halfway together. point. Yeah. Cause I feel like yeah. that's a good place. So we'll just jump in and, and see where we go. Cause I think that we can. It's also, this, this is a big endorsement because you reached the point now where you don't want to stop watching. Yeah. No, I, I, this show is very, it's working and I have issues with it at the same time. And I'm like, how would I have fixed it? And I don't know if I know how I would have fixed it. So maybe it doesn't need to be fixed. That's what I'll yeah. say right there. Like, like I couldn't say, like, well, if you did it like this, it would be better because what it is doing right now is it, 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 is, it is paying off. And I, I think watching it in real time with you and having this reaction has been really interesting because I wonder how I would have felt if I watched it through and then spoke about it because right now having the, the breaks, I'm able to reset. So let's watch yeah. these, these last two and see. Yeah. We're back to the low res. Low res, very low res. It's amazing this is not available anywhere because you must imagine it's very expensive. halfway through and i gotta tell you now i'm like switched up on my opinion about tom oh no we're not we have one more i'm switched up on my opinion about tom hanks like Mm -hmm. i now i'm like now i've like the last two times i've seen this character i'm like now i buy this character i don't know if it's just time i've spent with or or he has found a different groove with it like it i i think that there was a the first episode it felt like there was a character in the voice and then I think mm-hmm. a couple of the episodes in the middle felt like it was more Tom Hanks in the voice. And then I feel like in the last couple episodes, it was back a little bit more of a, a different tone in the voice. I, I don't know. I, maybe I'm imagining all of this. It's funny because this time I was uh, I was thinking of Tom Hanks has spoken about how when he's recorded the voice for Woody in the Toy Story things that a lot of times they'll have him come in and it'll be a lot of like sounds that Woody's making when he's like climbing the side of a bookshelf yeah. or something. And so yeah. he'll come in, he'll be like, oh, ah, ooh, ah, oh, geez, ah. and he'll just be like doing that. And they'll be like, now I want you to grunt. Oh, yeah. And when they get to what is a uh, more of a sex scene than we associate with modern Tom Hanks uh, yeah. performances, there, there's a sound. I, I'm like, oh, I wonder. Uh, I had to go in and do ADR for an uh, episode of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It was my first time doing ADR on a thing. And it was just the word, uh, or, or, hmm. Oh, and they just wanted me, so for about 20 minutes, I was just going like, ah, hmm, uh, yeah. uh, I was just doing, and I was just trying to, you know, it's hard to match this sort of thing. So oh, I was just yeah. wondering how many takes it took to get the, mm, well, like, I'll, the, I'll tell you, I will tell you every animated show that I've done, they save those for the last mm-hmm. bit, yeah. right? So you record all your lines and then it's like, okay, now you got punched. Now you're falling down. And especially a show I do called Big City Greens. Uh, my character's yeah. always getting really uh, tossed around. And so I'm always like, oh, uh, 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 oh. <laughs> like, you know, and it's like, and you lose track of it and, the, and hopefully people are, are keeping it in. But yeah, this show is sexy. Like, and I, and I mean that like in a, in a way, well, yeah. yeah, you know what? You're seeing a lot of cleave uh, in this, in this show. You're seeing a mm-hmm. lot of violence in this show. It's an adult show. That yeah. is the only ding on it for being a, a web series. I, I feel like, it's almost too, I think this content is too adult. You can't even, yeah. this is not even a family, it's not a family sci-fi. And I think there are family sci-fis, but I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I think there may no, be something wrong just, for that yeah. in this format. Uh, do you know who, uh, who else has been on Big City Greens? Who? Tom Hanks. Wow. You share that credit. You share that credit. Wow. I did not know that. So oh my more gosh. than more than one animated voice. Uh, uh, we have shared the we have shared the ADR stage. All right, so episode ten. Here we here go. We go. At the halfway point, I gotta say, it hooked me. This show hooked me. I'm in. Yeah. I, I I am I am uh, I'm su- I've surprised myself in in uh, in where I got to. It, it's all 
Well, answer me this. You've seen it all. Yeah. Is the storytelling getting better or is it the culmination of the story? I think it's the culmination of the story. I think okay. that in some ways being broken up into chapters, um, it's starting, we're starting to get momentum that was harder to build five yes. minutes at a time until you started to, now we basically, we've watched half of a movie basically. Yes. And in some ways, I mean, this would be a tremendous amount of ground to cover. If, if this was just one episode, what we just watched was one episode. Yeah. It would have been too much ground to cover. In a way. Uh, it would, yeah. You would have been like, I'm done. I, I, yeah. Right there, exactly. you're, well, just, you're just more for the sustainability of it. You'd be burning through story at an alarming rate. Yeah. If this was the pilot. Right, right, right. right. Um, and, but it does, one of the things that makes me excited about talking about this with people is that, I mean, this got written up in the New York Times when it came out, and that wasn't enough to get it noticed in the in the sense that, like, I mean, there were people who watched it when it came on, but I have yet to find a single person. I, I, I'm going to really, I'm going to, but I will go yeah. out and, and say that, you know, to your point, I hear, I hear what you're saying, but yeah. it, I think where you have to also put into context the time in which it happen this is two thousand this is uh, uh 10 years ago you know it's a yeah. 2011 does it come out about i think it comes yeah. out in 2012 2012 okay the, so the first email i got about it was uh let's see i got my first email uh 2010 so that makes sense it comes out in 2012 because I, I think when i have my next batch of emails it's all from comic-con um and yeah it's a two, in november 2011 i'm getting uh stuff about coming on and doing promotions and stuff so in this world, that's where we have gone. You have to remember that only a handful of years ago, people were like, well, that's it. Netflix is going to go out of business because they stopped sending out DVDs. Mm -hmm. What a fucking bonehead choice they've made. They're dumb. They're dumb. Yeah. The stock goes down. We have come so far in the world of streaming. And I'm a big believer in this. I had a meeting early on before Amazon became Amazon, when they first right. kind of launched their thing, it was very hard to find their TV shows. It was like hidden. It's like you would go to Amazon.com and there, there was no central hub. It was mm -hmm. like, okay, if you clicked in this one area, you could get to their thing. Now it's a whole different thing. They've got apps. They've got portals. They are actively saying, we want you to watch the television that we produce. But right. even back then when we were doing, uh, and I've done a lot of web series, I guess is what I'm saying too. I've yeah. done like the real uh hot wives of orlando and las vegas and i and i was a part of burning love and and i've done things for full screen and i did this thing for yahoo called drive share which was like basically reno 911 with ubers and we've done all these yeah. things and the and these things die on platforms because the platforms are so confident in their ability to do something that no one else has done we are going to be the first ones i sat down at full screen when we did filthy preppy teens there they were like we are going to be the we're going to be bigger than Hulu. It was gone within a year and a half, and it wasn't because of what they picked. It was because of how do you get it? Quibi. We figured out how to monetize YouTube, and it falls apart. It's like when you're you. I'm a big believer in get it out to every which place, and I and this is like and go to podcasting and go. You know, there's all these exclusive podcasts. Fuck that. Yeah. Make my podcast available on Spotify, make it available on YouTube, make it available on a podcast app. Because however, you got to make it accessible. To say to somebody, right. go to Yahoo, and it's on the front page every Wednesday. You know, it, this should have been electriccity.com. And maybe there was electriccity.com. I don't know. But we were at a time where we were not ready fully mm -hmm. for this. And, we're, and, and, and where I will say that Burning Love or our Hot Wives succeeds is not because of uh, content. It's because of comedy. And I think comedy is always going to be a, a digestible. You, I think you're much mm -hmm. easier to watch a sketch. This is a, a huge investment and, and a, an investment that arguably doesn't really pay off until about an hour. And, you know, or you're, mm -hmm. you're putting in a, a chunk, let's say a half an hour, yeah. be kind and say a half an hour, but I would yeah. say more to an hour. Uh, you know, so that, that I think all these things like, yes, it can be great. And there are great things. And I'm proud of some of the things that I've done that no one will ever see. I don't even know where they are. I just finally saw DriveShare the other day, like on Amazon, 
like I don't even know how it got on Amazon. It's just like <laughs> these things. They, like why why are we watching this in crappy quality on YouTube? Like no one's bought this. Why why not? Where where is this? Like you know, it just these things. Just yeah, you know, it's, like, it's hard. Like like go ninety was go ninety yes. where dry share was. Yeah, that's where go. Yep, yep, go ninety. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had worked on a thing that was the Mariah Carey uh, Christmas sketch oh, yes, 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 yes. And that, it was, I don't know if it still is, but at one point when we were doing a George Lucas talk show, somebody pointed out that it was on Amazon. You now it was on Amazon Prime. Yeah. And, and when we went to it, um, J.D. Amato was, uh, had worked on that in some capacity. And he said, I'm not sure that these are the final edits. Like that some of yeah. what had been uploaded had been maybe like work print edits of episodes. Well, be, you know? Yeah, because I think that they are, you know, it's sort of like a, it's a salvage sale. Like I did a show for uh, a network called Echo and Echo is an interactive platform, really cool technology. They have figured out how to do live action, interactive programming. And we made a yeah. show and we finished it and we edited it. And we were the one of the few shows that got done, but it is closed for business. That show is sitting on a shelf. No one's trying to actively sell it. We have an amazing cast. It's the technology is so fucking cool because you can pick it like it is like choose your own adventure, but there's never a stop. There's never a stop mm -hmm. moment. And it just it's seamless. It's it, there's so much great hardware there. And this is what kind of happens is like what I had heard last was that the network was hoping to sell our finished uh, thing, which is very, very long. Um, mm -hmm. because of all the multiple pieces um, and another one those are the only two that were finished they were going to sell the um, the the dailies of the other three that were in process and then they were going to sell the scripts for the other two that they never made so they were basically selling like a development slate to whoever wanted to buy it it's like okay you can get some scripts you can get some things you can yeah. and it's like and when you get that kind of stuff like I think not to say not speaking negatively about any streamer but they don't care it's like here's the content we have and if it's in a work print or if it's finished like their quality control is not their concern their concern is like we put these things up you know like it's not they're yeah. not taking over creatively or you know or who knows i have a quote here if you go to the electric city wikipedia page mm -hmm. there's a quote from aaron mcpherson who was the yahoo vice president mm -hmm. and she says and i assume this is from the time she says, it's the first project in what we call online digital blockbusters. This is new for Yahoo and new for the internet. This is maiden territory. And that's exactly what you were talking about, which is that like companies are like, we're going to do a thing yep. that nobody's ever done before. And the and some of those, some of those things, you know, Steve Jobs got up on a number of occasions and said, we're going to try this new thing that no one's ever done. And they stuck. And sometimes, yeah. you know, the, there's always something very funny to me about anytime someone declares like here is a new thing and it's great and it's going to change the world and every now and then one of those is true and it does right. change the world it works but for every one of those there's a dozen others where you no know, it didn't work where you know right. it, it well we get in this thing of like it's also about accessibility and i will say that you know i just made that big impassioned speech about why it shouldn't work and and here we go right before this burning love totally works on the same exact platform and is a yeah. giant hit and everyone is seeing it. And, but here's what I'll say about Burning Love, which was so funny, was so many people who watch it on Yahoo thought it was actually a real show. Like, and they were arguing about it in the comments and we used to pass those comments around because people didn't understand it was a comedy show and these were actors because also you're not, you're not engaging your crowd on Yahoo because you're saying, well, the president is meeting with Netanyahu today, Burning Love episode four, uh, you know, uh, you know, whatever it is, you know, cholesterol yeah. is increased by red wine, you know, so it's like there are three videos there and, and there is no, this is entertainment. Now I will say that burning love probably works because it's parody. It's for most mm -hmm. people, it's easier to get, oh my God, yeah. have you seen the thing that's like this and you can pass it and you can share it. I would never yeah. think to share, I would watching one of these episodes that have to be like, you got to start at the beginning. Here's a link for it. Like you can't, like you can't get that. You can't just hook somebody on it. That's hard. And that's, that's one of the things that I'm kind of excited about for this episode to be talking about Electric City because it does feel like for all of the resources that were thrown at Electric City in terms of, you know, Yahoo saying this is this is a centerpiece of, you know, this new thing we're doing and obviously a lot of money and resources yeah. are put into it. 
and the making of it and it was written about in the New York Times. So it wasn't like this was being buried or hidden anywhere. But I feel like there'll be people who'll hear this episode and they'll go seek it out as a underground sort of almost like in a way that feels close to the theme of the actual uh, series itself and that people are going to have to we're watching a show about these like pirated tap kits where people are tapping into these right. signals and we're watching Electric City in what is a, a completely illegal upload to YouTube. Yeah. And you, you know what I mean? like it only exists in the same sort of like pirated uh, way that the show is uh, actually. Yeah, doing it, you know, exactly. And it, and and you watch all this stuff. And I, I really am thinking about like I've been thinking so much about Quibi, too. Like, I have no idea if those shows were good, like or bad. Or, yeah. you know, or, or how could you even say every show is good or every show is bad? You know, it, all you could say is that it was inconvenient for me to watch. I remember, and, yeah. I remember a few years back auditioning for a thing that was going to be part of Facebook's new. Oh, yeah. Life. I'm on one of the, I'm on an animated show on Facebook. Yeah. You called Human and Discoveries. Dave I Frank. have no, I have no idea how to find a show on Facebook. It's I don't even, I, I'm, I, I go on that platform every now and then now, and I kind of am not even quite sure. I'm not even confident that if you said to me, go to your list, go to a page that shows me all your friends on Facebook, I'd be like, give me a second. I'm not sure which button does that anymore. Yeah. Like it's, I, I remember being in a conversation with a couple of people a few years ago who were saying that Facebook was going to be the future of television. That's where everyone goes for Facebook. Yep. So they're, that's where you're going to go for your show. Well, that was like, Go90. Go90 was exactly that. They were like, Go90, everyone, ha everyone who has Verizon is going to watch it because it's already on their phones. But yeah. that's where Apple TV succeeds because everyone does have an iPhone. You give them a free subscription for two years and you yeah. get a show that enough people talk about with one of the friends and one of America's sweethearts. They'll watch it. Or you get a show like Ted Lasso where all of a sudden you're in the pandemic. Everyone's Ted Lasso, it's good. And, but I have it. I have it. It's literally it's forced onto my phone. I have to use yeah. that to navigate. It's, it's interesting because in some ways, you know, the being everyone being given the free apple tv plus subscription mm -hmm. it, it has a value like you're aware that people who don't like i don't have an iphone uh so i don't have that free subscription when i wanted to watch greyhound i had to buy apple tv plus for a month right and but it, but it's a thing of value when i the in some ways yahoo screen being free i almost wonder whether yeah whether whether electric city would have done better if they'd said they're not releasing this series. You're not allowed to watch it. And then people had bootlegged, you know, like right. yeah. the, the, whether people, if people had had to work to seek it out versus when, a, when something's free, sometimes it lose. It's almost like when, when CD burners, when machines that burn you, where you could copy CDs, when those yeah. were a thing, I immediately like started borrowing like my friends collections and burning copies. I never listen to those burned copies of well, those out. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm with you. And I will also just say one step further, which is like you, it's so tricky because we live in a world where we all are creatures of patterns, right? Like we understand like we, where we go, where we get stuff. So the minute I remember like uh, that, well, I would tell people like, oh, you have a show? Yeah, it's on uh, Adult Swim. Well, I don't get Adult Swim. You do. It's actually Cartoon Network. Oh, wait. I thought you said it was Adult Swim. Well, okay. Yes, it is Cartoon Network, but it's on yeah. at 1115 at night on th that's when it becomes Adult Swim. Wait, 1115? Yeah, it's a, you know, you're like, okay, so now I've already created like 10 barriers for you about yeah. what then you get nervous. Like, I don't even know if I could watch it. Even when I would say FX, I'm on a show right now that I'm very proud of with great people who uh, have Emmy nominations and everything. Don Cheadle, Regina Hall, Andrew Annals, myself, Casey Wilson. It's called Black Monday. It's on Showtime. And I swear to God, one of the biggest problems with that show is no one has Showtime. Like everyone's like, oh, I want to see it. I just don't have Showtime. And, yeah. and that's the end of it. And that will be the end of it. So if you don't get it in front of people, the Schitt's Creek works on Netflix. The league exploded on Netflix. And it's not because... Yeah, it's only because of you put it on the thing that people want. But now everyone got greedy and like, well, we need to be our own Netflix. And now we're going to be we are on Netflix. So now you have to buy us. But you don't realize that your shows could actually be benefit from the success of being on Netflix where they can like it's so it's weird. It's like you immediately yeah. go like, well, how can I become that instead of how can I feed into it or something?